Back so soon? I knew you would not falter. Welcome back to Hand of Fate. In the last episode, we defeated the Jack of Dust in the first part of the tutorial dungeon. Well, the tutorial dungeon. Uh, the game's not quite done, and we're going to see exactly what it does. Let's jump right in. Ah, good. Now you understand the basics, we can begin in earnest. Your hero is returned to his beginning items. Our decks are reset. Welcome to the cabinet, home of the members of my court. So, endless mode's not quite there yet. Three modes are default. You can see we have quite a bit ahead of us. For now, we have the Jack of Skulls. Time for you to face my undead army. Meet the Jack of Skulls. All right. The deck builder is where the game's, well, deck building comes in. I'm going to set to recommended first. This is what it looks like. At the top, you have any cards that aren't actively in use. And at the bottom, everything which is going to go into play. Some of these, we don't know yet. All we need to do is see them in the game world. But really, this is enough to start out with. Our fate is our game mode. Uh, this was originally released in an update before you can only do Apprentice, Easy Mode, Adventure, Default Mode, and Warlord, the Hard Mode. But the update added all these different backgrounds, which changed the game, also add extra adventures. I'll post them in the thread for people to see and vote on. And I will start playing with some of these after the first Endless Mode run. And here on the right, we have the Encounters. So we get to choose what challenges are in the game, but not completely. If you notice these cards here have a tab and a lock at the top, these cards are unable to be removed from the encounter, uh, from the encounter deck, either because it's part of the tutorial and we can't do anything about it, or we've activated some kind of condition for them to exist, and we need to find the condition to resolve the encounter permanently. These are fairly easy. Jack of Skulls needs to be here, because otherwise we can't fight against it. Things like Mr. Lionel, the Maiden, and Twisted Canyon are beginner cards, and soon we'll be able to play without them. For the most part, recommended decks and uh, recommended equipment, sorry, recommended equipment decks and recommended encounter decks are perfectly fine, but there are times you might want to adjust some cards in and out. For example, things that you've seen too much or encounters that really aren't worth it. For now, really fine. We'll just start right here. New content awaits you. It will be awarded when you complete your run. I will add my own cards to the deck. How boring life would be without a little spice. Yep, deal is bastard. We play for life and death. Prepare yourself. I'm starting to wonder if you're simply leaving this card in as a quick way to get your hands on a shield. I mean, you're not wrong. Um, well, we should have plenty of food still. Ask him what he needs is not completely free, but what you get removed, you don't decide. So. Let's just do this. Oh, this is a very good starting shield. I don't know if you are automatically determined to get this on this dungeon run, but 
not consuming food every few encounters is absolutely fantastic. I always thought it was best to avoid the problems of others. I see you have no such concerns. There's a token in it for you if you win. Ah, and here we see another example. Token icon at the bottom of the card, and if we successfully deal with this encounter, in this case should be fairly easy, we will unlock more content. More skeletons for you to deal with. It's a lump of iron on a stick. Not terribly subtle. Are you sure that's the right approach? There's, there's no reason not to use the mace in this dungeon. Chops. The token is yours. Well done. Given how rarely one encounters the folk, you are fortunate indeed to meet Merith again. Or perhaps we are merely cycling around the wheel and dipping into the same memories time and time again. Eh. Honestly, I don't really need anything yet. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Deeper towards our foe. Many have reached this far. Further, in fact. I do not know if you have what it takes to do better than they did. Here's a slightly more complex dungeon layout. We still don't have true multiple paths, but if our resources were much lower, there would be a greater risk-reward trade-off. It lives in every game. That initial moment where things begin. I have worked on these cards all my days, and the canyon has been there from the outset. A choice. Select your desire. We have enough food. We can do all of these. Running water protects against many things in myth. Generally, though, it's just a pain to get past. Okay, the game is really tutorializing here. If you followed the cards, you would have noticed huge success stayed right on top, and the deck shuffled once, it is right here.
as I kind of mentioned in the last video, this is not just a great time to buy stuff. It's a great time to identify stuff. Anything you see in the shop will be identified for further dungeon runs, even if you don't buy it or pick it up anywhere else. Ooh. I really, really want this, though. This is a really high damage mace. Probably not the best, but at this start of the game, 32 damage is nothing to sneeze at, especially for going against skeletons. We don't even have to be low on health for it to matter. I'm impressed. Few select these sorts of weapons because nobody ever anticipates being in peril. Such misplaced confidence is usually their downfall. Uh, we're not gonna get hits from bows and wands right now. And this is an artifact. It is a usable item in a combat. We'll pick this up. It has limited uses. A classical approach to dealing with crowds. Little thing here at the bottom, kind of the power or rarity. Artifacts provide powerful special abilities to use in combat, but it takes time to ready them. And why not? Again, the surprise attack. The novelty must wear thin on subsequent travels. Artifact works with a simple key press. Artifacts have a recharge time, so you can't just spam them, and they also have an activation time during which you can be interrupted. Excellent way to turn an injury into an asset. So, medium armor is better, but moving around quickly is a little bit more useful right now. And again, we're not expecting any ranged combat here. Armor protects you from damage. The best armor, of course, does so much more. Were you hoping this was the end? No. Another floor awaits. Good. Now all you need to do is find and kill the Jack of Skulls and we can progress. Our bandits are displeased with your challenges. notice the mace is kind of a slower weapon. The game doesn't quite explain this to you, but there are different weapon classes. Um, I think sword is the fastest, and mace is the slowest, with axe kind of in between. So there is a damage and speed trade-off, and sometimes you're gonna want that speed. For now, I can just bash everything's facing.
So the last shop we were at was a Tinker. Tinker sells various items. The mage sells different magical things. Ooh. Okay. I really, really want this. It is it's fantastic. That you kill them, you'll curse them too. Oh, sorry for interrupting you. But yeah, cursing enemies like that is incredibly useful. We'll see it very soon. Ambush. Hardly fair, is it? Nothing about this is fair. I mean, I have three gold. But you're still going down. Oh, this might be one of the maps. Let me see if I can show this off. So maps are not just plain maps. Sometimes they have traps. Uh, this one doesn't. I'll try to show it off later. Sometimes it's easy to just get hit like that. Got careless. I cannot expect you to get by without some protection. Yeah, a bit too late on this one, buddy. Greed. If it were not for greed, then who would play at this game? I can take him. And this is where the chance events get harder. Uh, they get shuffled faster multiple times and they have fewer good results. Uh, in this situation, I usually pick something which I know, based on how it shuffled around, has a chance of not being a failure. Uh, never a guarantee, but... Right. But... We can take them. I'll start skipping these sequences soon. They get a little tiring after a while. And this is why, in a large group, you can almost never pull off a finisher, because immediately somebody else will try to start attacking. Top of that, with a slower weapon, it takes longer to counter. He didn't even need the artifact. Are you a woodsman turned warrior now? As pleases you. One of my cards. A small benefit. I will not be so graceful for long.
by now we've seen that some of the dealer's cards are blue. These are cards dynamically added to the deck by the dealer, either to spite you or to match the dungeon you're in. The Undead. Of all the players in the game, these are the most dangerous in the world, yet in no natural form. A wrongness. An error. Cheating. Win this and claim my token. Shots from rifles cannot be deflected. You would do better to avoid them. Are you agile enough? Oh, he's right about that. This is our first instance of ranged combat. I don't know if I can show it off here. Come on, try shooting me. Shoot me. There's friendly fire. It is fantastic if you can use it to your advantage. Because uh, otherwise, there is no way of dodging muskets. And although you want to target these guys first, as you may have read in this boss description, he can revive his allies. And this is why the hag wraps are fantastic. Now that he's down, we just need to clear the room. Ah, damn it. Yeah, it's really easy to be careless like that. And it'll get even worse later on. But he still goes down really quickly. Well done. Well done indeed. But you have roused the dead in their dusty tombs, and even I cannot say what will come of it. Now our wager becomes more interesting. Will the tools you've earned suffice to address the challenges I pose? That is the question, is it not? But before we get to all the fun unlocks from everything we've done this session, the game wants to show us everything the DLC has to offer. All its new encounters. was it for the Jack of Dolls. See you next time for the Queen of Dust.